Yo, what's up viewers? Um, I'm here at Olasso's headquarters, uh, watching everybody right now get down on their coding business. <laughs> so, very interesting, I gotta admit. Um, we're at the Plug and Play headquarters. This is where Olasso, um, the main blockchain is being worked on right now. So, main guys right here. are saying why format the price has gone up twice and that's one way of looking at it the other way to look at it is that uh, when we started the uh, private crowdfunding we made uh, the range as i said we're not really an ico we uh, basically uh, set a very uh, reasonable uh, valuation which is a uh, one to one thousands of uh, bitcoin because uh, we don't value whether Bitcoin is overvalued or undervalued, the Bitcoin is a reality. Yes. But if we're saying uh, this morning's uh, talk, uh, we do have a foundation. We do expect uh, we are the third generation of uh, of the blockchain technology. The first generation would be the uh, uh, blockchain. The block. uh, ledger. Ledger. Yes. Uh, comment. The second generation would be a uh, blockchain, programmable blockchain. Smart contract. <coughs> Smart contract. But uh, as I said, when I did the research, background research, do the the smart contract is only a subset of uh, the apps, dApps, yeah. right? Not the they're not equal. One is uh, a very small sub subset of the other. Exactly. Like, for example, how many days uh, this last year you've been to a lawyer firm? <laughs> you talk to a accountant or you talk, talk to a notary public, right? Mm -hmm. So we did a survey just a minute ago and uh, three of us, I don't know, have you been to the lawyer firms or accountant office or... Not, uh, not so much in Singapore. Not so, let's the three of us together, right? We each spend uh, 365 days, right? Three of us together, it's uh, 1,000 days. Yep. And if uh, 1,000 days, none of us want to spend a day over there, would, would it be fair to say you know, the lawyers, the notary public, the uh, uh, the courts, they're only at most 1,000 to our life, exactly. right? To our daily life. To our daily but life. how many uh, apps we used? WeChat, official, uh, uh, Facebook, and uh, and uh, Alibaba, you know, those things we use every, every day. Single day. Well, every single day. Every day. That means that's a 999 days, yeah. right? We use uh, every, every, every all the other apps, and only less than one day we use the uh, contracts or need a lawyer. I mean, basically, smart contracts is just a lawyer by machine. It's by not machine. a, not a uh, individual, not controlled, but it's like very faithful. <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. <laughs> high fidelity kind of uh, 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 execution, executor. Yes, exactly. Executor, right? Yeah. And uh, so that said, uh, comment. The second generation be a blockchain, programmable blockchain, smart contract. <coughs> smart contract. But uh, as I said, when I did the research, background research, do the the smart contract is only a subset of the apps. That yeah. right, not the they're not equal. One is uh, a very small sub subset of the other. Exactly. Like for example, how many days uh, this last year you've been to a lawyer firm? <laughs> you talk to a accountant or you talk, talk to a notary public, right? Mm. So we did a survey just a minute ago, and uh, three of us. I don't know. Have you been to the lawyer firms or accountant office or? Not, uh, not so much in Singapore. Not so, let's the three of us together, right? We each spend uh, 365 days, right? Three of us together, it's uh, 1,000 days. Yep. And if uh, 1,000 days, none of us want to spend a day over there, would, would it be fair to say, you know, the lawyers, the notary public, the, uh, uh, the courts, they're only at most 1,000 to our life, exactly. right? To our daily life. To our daily but life. how many uh, apps we used? WeChat, official, uh, uh, Facebook, and uh, and uh, Alibaba, you know, those things we use every, every day. single day. Well, every, every, every day. That means that's a 999 days, yeah. right? We use uh, every, every, every all the other apps, and only less than one day we use 
the uh, contracts or need a lawyer. I mean, basically, smart contracts is just a lawyer by machine. It's by not machine. a not a uh, individual, not controlled, but it's like very faithful, <laughs> right? Mm. <laughs> High fidelity kind of uh, 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 execution executor. Yes, exactly. Executor, right? Yep. And uh, so that said, my understanding is the smart contracts is a very very small subset of DApps. It's not equal. But Ethereum put them as a equal, equal parts. Yeah. DApps equal to smart contracts. Smart contracts equal to DApps. So that's where I feel I have uh, maybe I should jump in and uh, create this uh, uh, DApps uh, environment because of when you run DApps, you need an execution environment, which is a virtual machine OS. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, when I talk about uh, EVM or other VMs, definitely there are two problems you have to solve. One is uh, can you run native? Because not only you need to run scripts, you need to run Java, you need to run C. Because otherwise, you wouldn't be able to run uh, machine learning, you wouldn't be running uh, game engines, that kind of uh, uh, software. That's another huge set of uh, software. The dApps and applications, of course, dApps is another subset of uh, apps, yes. right? Apps is the whole <laughs> general everything, uh, everything yeah. right? Runs on a phone, runs on a PC. But dApps is a subset of it. Like uh, if you have WeChat, you have uh, the D versions of WeChat. Yes, the D. And if you have a Twitter, you have a D versions of the Twitter, right? Yeah. If you have a Skype, you have a D versions of the Skype. So what we're saying is that we're not going to get rid of WeChat, we're not going to get, get rid of uh, Skype, but then definitely people need D versions of it, yes. right? Just like uh, you go to Walmart to buy things, but can I buy something you know, from a bazaar, from farmer's market, mm -hmm. right? I mean, both have their place to so live. So, so what you're basically saying is you're going to make um, these applications out there pluggable right into the um, Elastos OS. No, no, no. Elastos OS, you have to uh, imagine it's uh, more like, first of all, it's like a, a virtual machine, yep. lightweight. So first of all, you can think of it like a, a Java. You know, Java virtual machine is installable on a PC, on Linux, and on an uh, iPhone. Because uh, that said, <coughs> it won't affect the existing Windows apps, the Linux apps, or iPhone apps, right? You just install a Java. When you have a Java app installed on a PC, you double click it, and of course, uh, underneath uh, the Java virtual machine launch, the Java apps being uh, loaded into the Java virtual machine mm -hmm. and running on top of the uh, Windows, yep. right? Yep. So that's the logic there. And uh, why we want to do Elastos? First of all, you can think of it, uh, think of it as the uh, C versions of Java virtual machine because we translated uh, uh, Java class library verbatim into C++. Mm. The reason being, uh, so then we have a very uh, rich development environment, uh, much more modern than C library. <laughs> there we need to say, you know, that's a Unix 40 years ago when I, you know, 34 years ago when I went to the US, the first thing I learned was Unix. The first uh, command that I was cat, right? The professor basically gave a, a piece of paper saying, oh, those are the commands you need to remember and uh, those are the commands you need. Then from there on, and just read the documents and write to run, run, learn Linux, Unix, right? It's been 34 years and uh, it's so uh, buggy. Uh, error prone because of you can easily write through the buffer over buffer overrun. You can easily write uh, demons and write uh, DDoS attacks, write uh, fake drivers to steal uh, everyone's uh, admission, you know, per, 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 <coughs> primary or, or preliminary <laughs> well, private uh, information. So uh, if we have a C versions of a Java class library, of course the programming um, tools, the libraries would be, uh, would be much more advanced. And secondly, of course security-wise, it's much easier, much harder to write a buffer overrun, yeah. that kind of bugs. And uh, thirdly, because uh, when you uh, look at Java, not only it's uh, a virtual machine, Actually, it uh, manages all your uh, file access or uh, TCP ID because of you read a file to Java. Actually, you're not reading a file from Java. Java will relay it to the host OS, mm -hmm. but somehow Java will manage it, right? Because uh, 
uh, without you knowing too much. Because uh, if you're going, you give me a URL saying, tell Java should give me this website. Mm -hmm. And uh, Java actually going out and, uh, and uh, generate a proxy, so-called, in the virtual machine. So you're really accessing the fake the fake, uh, the fake uh, uh, proxy saying you basically get a get and put, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? You get and put, uh, you get and post, you get and post. Do you know you really get a post from that from machine, machine or you're getting post from a proxy in your Java virtual machine? Yeah. There's no way for you to tell. So uh, basically that's where, where I can easily fake the, uh, the interface, right? If I fake the interface, then the application has no knowledge of whether you're really accessing the real website or the fake website. So that's how we make it. Uh, uh, a, we make uh, three rules. The applications will not be able to directly write an IP socket. And IP socket is also again the thing I learned uh, 84, 85, 30. Four thirty three years ago, mm -hmm. basically I remember the TCP IP packet was uh, uh, 1514 bytes. Weird number, it's not binary, it's not a <laughs> decimal, it's just 1514, I don't know why, but then it's 1514. And it got a uh, destination address, got a uh, source address, got a uh, magic number. So then it's pretty much like a uh, uh, fake, uh, I mean, a surface mail. A destination address, you know, uh, uh, source address, and. <coughs> the date, and then uh, magic number saying uh, your, uh, your surf surface mail, air mail, you know, priority mail, register mail, this I can say something. Mm -hmm. That's the magic number. And that's the uh, internet packet. Good thing about it is it's not a virtual circuit, so you can send it related to friends. But bad thing is, what if the middleman, the mailman, fake your uh, source address? Fakes it, yeah. Then that's a middleman attack. Mm -hmm. If we fake the uh, source address, right, that's a DDoS attack. Mm -hmm. If I fake the uh, contents, right, because everything in the middle, it's not uh, really a bug, it's an internet by design, it's a flaw. And uh, think about it, you know, when you do, um, so that's why we don't allow applications to send network packets at all. At all. And actually, people are saying, you know, we could do smarter, we could be more efficient, send ourselves. That's nonsense because let's say, for example, if you want to send a network packet from Shanghai to Beijing, yeah. which way is faster? You know, if you write an internet game, like you, you write a, a game engine, you host the engine in Beijing and you have a player in Shanghai, and uh, you, since you write the client, you write the server, you write the name server, you think you're smart, and right? then you go IP packet to Beijing. Mm -hmm. Guess again. Because there's a Yangtze River, right? The, the, the north of the river is managed by one telecom, and then the other one, which one is by China Unicom, one, one is by China Telecom, right? Yeah. They're competition. Yeah, they're and, competition. Right. right. The easier way is uh, going to Chengdu first, mm -hmm. then going back. Yeah. Right? Because but does the developer know? You don't. Yeah, you don't. You don't. Only by instrumentation, only by, you know, like a uh, understanding yeah. as a smart contract is a very, very small subset of dApps. So it's not equal. But the Ethereum put them as a equal mm -hmm. parts. Yeah. The DAPs equal to smart contracts. Smart contracts equal to DAPs. So that's where I feel I have uh, maybe I should jump in and uh, create this uh, uh, DAPs uh, environment because of when you run DAPs, you need an execution environment, which is a virtual machine OS. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, when I talk about uh, EVM or other VMs, definitely there are two problems you have to solve. One is uh, can you run native? Because not only you need to run scripts, you need to run Java, you need to run C. Because otherwise, you wouldn't be able to run uh, machine learning, you wouldn't be running uh, game engines, that kind of uh, a software. That's another huge set of uh, software. The dApps and applications, of course, dApps is another subset of uh, apps, yes. right? Apps is the whole <laughs> general everything, uh, everything yeah. right? Runs on a phone, runs on a PC. But dApps is a subset of it. Like uh, if you have WeChat, you have uh, the D versions of WeChat. Yes, the D. And if you have a Twitter, you have a D versions of the Twitter, right? Yeah. If you have a Skype, you have a D versions of the Skype. So what we're saying is that we're not going to get rid of WeChat, we're not going to get, get rid of uh, Skype, but then definitely people need D versions of it, yes. right? Just like uh, you go to Walmart to buy things, but can I buy something you know, from a bazaar, from farmer's market, mm -hmm. right? I mean, both have their place to so I. So, so what you're basically saying is you're going to make uh, these applications out there pluggable right into the um, Elastos OS. 
No, no, no. Elastic OS, you have to uh, uh, imagine it's uh, more like, a, first of all, it's like a, a virtual machine, yep. lightweight. So you, first of all, you can think of it like a, a Java. You know, Java virtual machine is installable on a PC, on Linux, and on an uh, iPhone. Because uh, that said, <coughs> it won't affect the existing Windows apps, Linux apps, or iPhone apps, right? You just install a Java. When you have a Java app installed on a PC, you double-click it. And of course, uh, underneath uh, the Java virtual machine launch, the Java apps being uh, loaded into the Java virtual machine mm -hmm. and running on top of the uh, Windows, yep. right? Yep. So that's the logic there. And uh, why we want to do Elastos? First of all, you can think of it uh, think of it as the uh, C versions of Java virtual machine because so we translated uh, uh, Java class library verbatim into C++. The reason being, uh, so then we have a very uh, rich development environment, uh, much more modern than C library. <laughs> there you need to say, you know, that's a Unix 40 years ago when I, you know, 34 years ago when I went to the US, the first thing I learned was Unix. The first uh, command that I will ask Cat, right? The professor basically gave a, a piece of paper saying, oh, those are the commands you need to remember, and uh, those are the commands you need. Then from there on, and just read the documents and try to run, run, learn Unix, right? It's been 34 years. And uh, it's so uh, buggy, uh, error prone, because of you can easily write through the buffer over buffer overrun. You can easily write uh, demons and write uh, DDoS attacks, write uh, fake drivers to steal uh, everyone's uh, administrative, you know, per, 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 <coughs> Primary or, or preliminary, <laughs> whatever private uh, information. So, uh, if we have a C versions of a Java class library, of course, the programming um, tools, the libraries would be uh, would be much more advanced. And secondly, of course, security wise, it's much easier, much harder to write a buffer override. Yeah. That kind of bugs. And uh, thirdly. Because uh, when you uh, look at Java, not only it's uh, a virtual machine, actually it uh, manages all your uh, file access or uh, TCP IP because of you read a file to Java, actually you're not reading a file from Java. Java will relay it to the host OS, mm -hmm. but somehow Java will manage it, right? Because uh, uh, without you knowing too much. Because uh, if you're going, you give me a URL saying, tell Java, Give me this website, mm -hmm. and uh, Java actually going out and uh, and uh, generate a proxy, so called, in the virtual machine. So you're really accessing the fake, the fake, uh, the fake uh, uh, proxy. Saying you basically you get a get and put, <laughs> right? You get and put, uh, you get and post, you get and post. Do you know you're really get and post from that from machine, machine, or you're get and post from a proxy in your Java virtual machine? Yeah. There's no way for you to tell. So uh, basically, that's where where I can usually fake the. Uh, the interface, right? If I fake the interface, then the application has no knowledge of whether you're really accessing the real website or the fake website. So that's how we make it. A, 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 we make a three rules. The applications will not be able to directly write IP socket. And IP socket is also again the thing I learned uh, 84, 85, 30. Four thirty-three years ago, mm -hmm. basically, I remember the TCP/IP packet was uh, uh, fifteen fourteen bytes. Weird number. It's not binary. It's not a decimal. It's just fifteen fourteen. I don't know why, but then it's fifteen fourteen, and it got a uh, destination address, got a uh, source address, got a uh, magic number. So then, it's pretty much like a uh, uh, fake uh, mean a surface mail, a destination address, you know, uh, uh, source address, and. <coughs> the date, and then uh, magic number saying uh, your your surf, surface mail, air mail, you know, priority mail, register mail, basically you say something. Mm -hmm. That's the magic number, and that's the uh, internet packet. Good thing about it is not a virtual circuit, so you can send it, relay it to friends. But bad thing is, what if the middleman, the mailman, fake your uh, source address? Fake it, yeah. Then that's a middleman attack. Mm -hmm. If we fake the uh, source address, right? That's a DDoS attack. Mm -hmm. If I fake the uh, contents, right? Because everything in the middle, it's not uh, really a bug. It's an internet by design. It's a flaw. And uh, think about it. You know, when you do um, 
So that's why we don't allow applications to send network packets at all. At all. And actually, people are saying, you know, we could do smarter, we could be more efficient, send ourselves. That's nonsense because, let's say, for example, if you want to send a network packets from Shanghai to Beijing, yeah. Which way is faster? You know, if you write a internet game, like you you write a, a game engine, you host the engine in Beijing, and you have a player in Shanghai, and uh, you since you write the client, you write the server, you write the name server, you think you're smart, and you, then you go IP packet to Beijing. Mm-hmm. Guess again, because there's a Yangtze River, right? The, the, the north of the river is managed by one telecom, and then the other one, which one is by China Unicom, where, where one is by China Telecom, right? Yeah. They're competition. Yeah, their and, competition way. Right. The easier way is uh, going to Chengdu first, mm-hmm. then going back. Yeah. Right? Because the, the developer know. Mm-hmm. You don't. Yeah, you don't. You don't. Only by instrumentation, only by, you know, like... Uh, uh, so definitely, if you're saying um, the developers are smarter, they really, really have to think again. Because, like, if we make a phone call to uh, a phone in the U.S., should I go through satellite? Should I go to uh, the cable under the sea? Should I go through microwave? Should I go to the moon and back, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, the developers really don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Because uh, it depends on the situation. Maybe there's an earthquake. You probably shouldn't go that route. Then we should go somewhere else. So that, that said, given the current communication speed and uh, uh, CPU uh, power, and uh, we feel it's about time to take over all together for the reason of uh, security. And uh, second thing is uh, we don't allow applications to write uh, demons. We don't allow the uh, device drivers because of, again, you know, really because everything's smart, why do I need the drivers? And why do I need the demons? Because when I turn on the PC, there are tons of them. Uh, Launching in my bag, and how many uh, of demons you know what they're for? Mm-hmm. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reason why they're there is because Unix was developed 40 years ago. 40 right? years ago. It was a floppy drive. I mean, if I don't start it uh, when the machine boots up, I mean, the floppy couldn't keep up with American typing. Yeah. Because they didn't type too fast. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the floppy. <laughs> I mean, for me, it can keep up, right? <laughs> for you, it won't, right? Yeah. So that's why they need a demon, because otherwise, it won't keep people to keep up. But now with the uh, computer speed, if you just read it fresh from the hard drive, it's faster than you type. No, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're talking about uh, working with, uh, I just, just did a calculation when I graduated from college, when I went to the U.S. At that time, the CPU speed was uh, 330,000 s- CPU uh, cycles per second, right? Mm-hmm. But now we're 3 gigahertz per Three second. Gigahertz. That's yeah. the, Totally different now. That's 10,000 times just by the cycles, right? Not to mention the parallelism, the multi yeah. uh, hyper threads, hyper whatever in the CPU. <coughs> so that said, a lot of assumptions made 40 years ago, like uh, the internet, the Unix, they're all false. Yeah, they're all they're false. They're all false. And uh, so it's about time to overhaul. Everything, everything from the uh, very fundamental level. Because even when I learn computers, we start from the core memory, so we know what's core dump. So it's still core, literally core, right? Mm-hmm. It's not a uh, not transistors. And then at that time, when we learn programming, actually there's no BIOS. We literally have to hand input uh, the 13 instructions so the paper tape machine would run. Wow. Right? Oh. Basically, you write the BIOS yourself you every, time. It every, every time. time. Every, every time. Every time. I never know what BIOS is. Every time you turn on the code machine, every time you turn on the code machine, you have to talk in the first 13 instructions. Mm-hmm. Well, then you, there's a button called a run. Then basically, you hit that run that runs that 13 instructions, which basically turn on the paper tape machine and read the first uh, program oh, in, right? That's called a BIOS now. Mm-hmm. And uh, with that kind of uh, training or, or understanding, uh, so maybe that's the last chance for a human being to reinvent everything from scratch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the next generation will know. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 The new generation even doesn't even know how <laughs> the computer was turned out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even the programmers are this, some of them might not even they know. They just think it's uh, from the li- lifetime they used to the demons, they used to the t- TCP IP sockets, yeah. and they don't know. Because at that time, at the University of Illinois, you know, we, we basically set up, not me, but the, the lab, right? The lab and a few other labs, we uh, literally, they set up uh, uh, five supercomputer uh, centers, like the uh, University of Illinois has two of them, like 
Korea and SMP, Korea too. And uh, San Diego, you see San Diego, Cornell, uh, Princeton, uh, UC San Diego, Illinois, Cornell, Princeton, CMU. And five schools are sponsored by DOD, DOE. And uh, we each got at least one supercomputer and hooked up by satellite and designed that network, right? It's mm-hmm. a five node <laughs> five <laughs> internet, right? Yeah. And then you have PCs hooking up to the uh, workstations so the scientists could get the visualization data. So you literally you got a chance to design a network from scratch. Yeah. From scratch, yeah. yeah. So with that said, do they take genius? You know, then you realize really no, because of uh, in those labs, who are in those labs? They're geniuses, but they're physicists. Mm-hmm. Why you see the browser was invented by Tim Berners Lee from the uh, uh, European Nuclear Lab? Is he a computer science, yeah. right? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. So that's why when I look at the uh, blockchain young kids, when they talk about touring, and uh, come on, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't about. know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> well, I'm glad for you because we have someone who knows from the ground up that we need. But like, uh, for example, I'd name a few mistakes that Tim Burns Lee made, right? Because uh, HTTP, colon. Why do we put HTTP there? It does that make any sense at all? So what does it actually do? It doesn't mean anything. Oh, wow. Because, let's say, when you read uh, uh, Microsoft Windows, you have C drive, D drive, E drive, right? Yeah. And tell me, E drive, which protocol is that E drive? Could that be USB drive? Could that be TCP IP drive? Could that be IPE? You know what I'm talking about? On a PC, right? Mm-hmm. You could not use a X drive, E drive to a, uh, another machine to TCP IP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could uh, put in a USB dongle, right? You could literally uh, have the E drive in your built-in hard drive, which is IDE protocol and uh, dongle meaning USB protocol, and put a uh, RG45 that's a TC- that's an Ethernet cable, right? So, but then when you read E drive, it's a E drive. You don't really know. You don't really care whether the E drive is a uh, what protocol. But when you say HTTP colon slash slash YouTube.com, mm-hmm. do you think you're really using HTTP? You're really, really, you're really using P2P. P2P. Right? Mm-hmm. But when you're doing a bank, HTTP colon 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 send to a bank, you're really using a VPN. Right? You're really not using HTTP. Come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so why is HTTP? It's just because of uh, Tim Burns put it there in the first place. Yeah. No other reason. Not at really. All. Just at all. He Did you ever like ask him in person whether there was <laughs> that was a gopher? That was a, because when we did the uh, internet, we did the FTP, right? We we have to put in something. Basically, that's a network protocol. But actually, the computation has nothing to do with the communication protocol. Because when you write a Turing machine, you know, Turing doesn't at that time does Turing know what's a computer, what's a network? It's long gone, mm-hmm. right? By the yeah. time. But he was genius enough to prove, you know, this is, I mean, you don't need to do anything more. That's the, uh, anything you can, programmable can be simulated by the machine. Wow. Yeah. So that means that I mean, everything can be simulated without network. Without the current network. Thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Then why is network? What's the importance of network to us? It's only because of uh, uh, network. TCP IP was de- developed by Tom. As I said today, and uh, Unix was developed uh, called Honey Hand with TCP IP. And when the Bell Labs released the uh, Unix code to Berkeley, and Berkeley on top of it wrote uh, the TCP IP stack. So TCP IP turned into uh, Unix uh, application. Right? Because it's written on top of Unix. It's written on top, yeah. But if you think the other way around, if uh, uh, TCP IP was invented first, first. And uh, the virtual machine is running on top, right? Because currently we have not only Linux, we have not only the TCP IP world, we also have virtual machines running on top. Exactly. Yeah. So the virtual machine is really sitting on top of TCP IP instead of TCP IP is sitting on top of Linux. And if you have virtual machines, then we have virtual machines from client spreading to the server. We call it, uh, I mean, elastic compute. Elastic compute, uh, the cloud computing, meaning uh, we can spawn uh, instances of virtual machines yeah. on demand on, the, yeah. on the cloud farm. But now can we extend that notion to the uh, the uh, client uh, cell phone? Because it's still a virtual machine. It's still a virtual And uh, if the network is fast enough, say we have one gigabit uh, cable in and out our home. So this paradigm could shift from the cloud farm to the client. 
correct? Yep. And then if the virtual machines are on the client and the sound server, I mean, applications running inside virtual machines, are there any difference from a software running in a phone and software running in another phone? But, I mean, physical machines versus two virtual machines, yep. two applications, they could not tell the difference. Yeah. And uh, if two phones can find one another through phone numbers, and uh, can virtual machines find one another through hash, yeah. through UUIDs, oh. right? Yeah. Ooh. And if the two virtual machines find each other through a hash, and uh, just like uh, if uh, my phone calling your phone was universal unique. Mm -hmm. So from one UUID, you find another UUID, two physical machines replace two physical, two virtual machines. That said, if you are fast enough doing, okay, can you read a zero? Can you write a zero? Can you move left? Can you move right? You're pretty much a tool machine. Yep. Yep. And if you're fa infinitely fast, you do any computation. Correct. Correct? There are the but phones. then if two phones, you're in a, a tool machine, I'm a tool machine, and uh, we are both infinitely fast, none of us could hack the, uh, could attack the network. Then, yeah. Because we call each other to a phone number. We don't even know what's the IP address of the, uh, of at and or uh, China Mobile. The way, no. right? I have no idea. What protocol they use? Did they go through satellite? Or do they go to undersea cable? We don't have no, no idea. idea. Yeah. Then which line do we want to decide to cut? <laughs> right, say we have a thesis, we send this guy, right? <laughs> go to the uh, Pacific Ocean and, and cut go, that line. Go, right? Then you set the line. <laughs> then, then tell me, you know, which line we tell him to cut. We have no idea. No idea. So there's absolutely no way for three of us to have the undersea cable. Wow. At least not uh, not three of us. Yeah, not yeah. three of us. Yeah. Not three of us. So that said, I mean, if two the applications running in the virtual machine, services running in the virtual machine of of the server in Amazon Cloud somewhere, and we connect through UUIDs or hash, right? And all the RPC is being generated by the operator, by the operating system, then absolutely there's no way for the application to attack the network. There's no way for the server to steal your, your information, information right? And uh, so that's one thing we need this uh, Java-like virtual machine. And the Java has two problems. One is that, um, Java is not C. So then when you write AI engines, when you write game engines, you need to resort to machine instructions mm -hmm. to squeeze out every every CPU cycle possible. So you need C and Java has a JNI and a calling native, right? So if we do a uh, native virtual machine, then we don't really need uh, to dig another hole into mm -hmm. the physical OS. This is a virtual machine OS. So we don't need another JNI to learn it to go back because yeah. our, our our speed is fast enough. We don't we don't give any excuse for the application which needs a uh, uh, backdoor to the native host OS. Second, the problem with Java is that uh, it didn't really um, enforce. Java has advantage so called uh, meta class meta information, you know, class information, reflection technology. But Java is not uh, um, designed end to end. Actually, Java was designed for interactivity. Oh, age. Really? Yeah, because uh, Java was designed in 1992, and uh, for the interactivity. At that time, the problem was that uh, you know on your set-top box, uh, you have uh, MIPS, you have uh, x86, you have uh, PowerPC, and you have Alpha. And when you have different uh, CPU architectures for uh, set-top box or PC. And head end, the server want to beam, want to beam the uh, the code uh, over to the front end. Can you tell which uh, CPU you're running on set up box? Somebody using MIPS, somebody using x right? So they have to beam the uh, intermediate code mm -hmm. and just in time to translate into the CPU instruction. That was the idea. That was the idea. But the uh, First of all, the one pro that's one of the problems is uh, intermediate code without even, it's not native code. So it's not fast enough to handle 100% of the apps. Second problem is that they didn't really do a front end, server end. They have to run two Java virtual machines at the same time. So they can take over hide the network altogether. Otherwise, if you just install Java on the client without installing it on the server, then you could not hide the network. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're just, I mean, in order to hide the network, we have to have an end-to-end. -end. And then the, both are from 
Java, or both from Elastos. Then the apps, when the apps running in this virtual machine and run, uh, the services running in this virtual machine, they really couldn't tell whether there's two virtual machines running on the same machine or the two virtual machines running across the internet. Mm -hmm. the, for the apps and services, how could they tell, right? So they believe they're running on Elastos computer, oh. right? If you're just handling one side, one That's end, right. And the other one's a PHP server. It's a CGI server. <laughs> it's a you know Python server. Then how can you handle it end to end? You can. You can't. So you cannot handle. You cannot hide the network. You can. That means if you have millions of installed, then you can launch DDoS attacks, right? Yep. To the other side. If both of them, if all of them are, that's why we're building a new territory. If all of the uh, 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 instances on this new territory oh, were virtual machines. And this is like all phones, right? They talk to each other all through this uh, hash, UUID. Then, because it's a end-to-end -end encrypted, because your ID, the service ID, service virtual machine is being registered on, on blockchain. The client being registered on the blockchain, so we know uh, this is a live body, this is not a dog, right? Because of the blockchain <laughs> told me so, yeah, yeah. and I believe that. So then I get your public key. I encrypt it, I intended to send it to you. I get your uh, public key from the blockchain. The blockchain. I send it to you, right? You can decipher my information, correct? Yep. But for him, he didn't really know which blockchain to read and uh, whether this message is for whom, for whom? randomly. So he couldn't possibly find a package saying, oh, no, no this is this your is uh, yeah. public key, right? Yeah. So definitely all the messages are end-to-end -end encrypted, correct? Yep. Virtual machine to virtual machine. And uh, so that's how we guarantee not only the speed, but that's a C++ version of virtual machine. And we also have to install virtual machine for services and applications and using blockchain to get us the public key, private keys, and uh, and then we had the uh, internet protocol all together. Wow. So that's the story, mm -hmm. right? So then we can have a, a new economy, kind of like cyber today in the meeting. I, I, I don't want to say that this is like a cyber republic. It's just like new cyber frontier. New frontier. New frontier. Right? It's a, total new a totally new frontier. Yeah. And on this frontier, everybody kind of... Uh, all the applications running in that virtual machines and virtual all machines virtual talking machines, to virtual machines. Virtual and machines. then all the phone, you know, virtual phones registered on the blockchain. Correct? Yep. And then there's no way for any of us to hack the uh, the network yet. So all open source and uh, no one controls us. No one controls it. So anyone can basically create a D app and no central authority can say anything Correct. about it. Correct. That's awesome. It's just much cleaner. Much cleaner. And a nice world to have. Yes. Right? So that's what we're saying. And on this economy, if we can trade ebooks from one virtual machine to another, and the ebook will first of all turn the ebook into a game, and the game launches, runs inside the virtual machine because the virtual machine loads that game because it's a Elastos game instead of a Windows game. Yep. You have to you just like Java, you double click it. The Elastos virtual machine runs first and the app. The, Loaded into the virtual machine. Yeah, okay. And the virtual machine, when it loads, because there's a loader and the loader will check, do you still have the right, property right to, to it? That game. If you have the right, I will run. If you don't have right, you have already sold the game. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you don't have the right no more, right? And uh, so then we can guarantee the scarcity of the book has only 10,000 copies oh, in circulation. And uh, that's how people can make a profit out of the scarcity. And if that's the case, the people will start to accumulate uh, personal assets. Oh, wow. Okay. And then when you have a virtue, everything's virtual, then you have personal assets, then you build up your wealth. Let's say here in China, I want to show, okay, um, I'm uh, sincere, I, you know, I, I treat you nicely, I'll send you to a five-star hotel, you know, treat you a dinner at a five-star hotel, you know, like, hey, showing I'm rich, I'm ser serious, and I want to spend money. But in this virtual world, all I need to say is that here's the invitation letter, and then there's a hash to your invitation letter, letter. then there's a, there's a nonce associated with it. 
right? The non matches your hash, I put the 60 zeros in front, then you know at least I burned this much dollars, right? Yeah. <laughs> you actually, even though it's a plain piece of paper, you know, it's, it's, it's worth, paper. it's yeah. worth tens of thousands of dollars. Of yeah. <laughs> you believe that, yeah. right? Yeah. If we're the believers. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I'm rich. I'm rich, exactly. <laughs> oh, you got a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, it's nothing fancy, but uh, I got so many zeros yeah. for the geeks. Hey, yeah, it's that's good. something. But that's it gets it's a something. point across. It's an asset. That piece right. of paper can be. So then, asset. what I'm saying is, can we have a GDP for this new frontier? Wow. If there's a GDP, and I say, just the problem is that I should not, I should have a choice. I should not be uh, tied to somebody for life. No, yeah. no. exactly. I mean, right now there's such a strong like monopoly over the whole market. Right, because yeah. basically it's more like uh, you know, cartels or and they mine they mine all your data without even you receiving anything. You know, they just see all your ads and they just mine all the data from all your search history and whatever you do, and they just use it for their benefit. You know. <laughs> yes. So many more questions. Um, I think that's it, Ron. Uh, that was great. That yeah. Was yeah awesome. Well, thank you for coming. No, it's, thank uh, you to the U.S. Yeah. From the U.S., it's a long flight. I know. It, it was long, but um, it's worth it. For you, anything yeah. for you. Guys. No, no, no. Because no. <laughs> I'm going to the U.S. We can meet again. Yeah, we'll meet again. So now you'll fly back for you. Yeah, yeah. You're flying for me. This time. <laughs> oh, okay. I fly for no one. I just stay in Singapore. I mean, we'll meet. Uh, yeah, we'll meet in Singapore. Remember uh, February first. Yeah, so February. You know, you invite, you're invited to yeah. to join the gala events. And, so have some fun yeah. beer together. Yes, beer together. Beer is, yeah. Expensive in Singapore. Oh, I mean, you bring, you bring some in. Because okay. there's alcohol tax. So in oh, Singapore, really? Yeah, there's oh, alcohol yeah. tax. I mean, I mean, beer is okay, but if you drink hard liquor, it's very expensive. Because oh. it's by percentage of alcohol, like alcohol. So if it's 40%, that means it's 40% of the tax. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah. So but is that okay? We'll bring our own. Yeah, yeah we bring our own. <laughs> 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 I think it's two beer per person. I think that's the max. That's it. <laughs> that's the max. One. <laughs> It's like a you know, casino. So when you start to lose money, and you put more. You put it more, and, yeah. and you, you wish to you know double, and and if you borrow and uh, margin. Yeah. I think it's worth in crypto because it's crowd thing. So everyone thinks in the same way. So they group thing. Then people who are actually manipulating the markets, they know what's happening. They earn all the money. Mm -hmm. Then all those who are in the like group, they just buy at the wrong time. Then they all suffer together. I think uh, if I want to give advice, it would be um, see how much. How many people made money from uh, from Netscape, right? Even Netscape itself went under, but, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, but because of the web, then there's a Yahoo, Google uh, uh, took off. So that said, the uh, if we put all the source code out, right, whether it's a Elastic Coin or not, I mean people could take it over and uh, set it up their own new business. Because as I said, um, trading peer to peer, uh, just a movie, just a game, just an ebook. I mean, sounds very, very humble and uh, uh, to start, but yet really, finally, because you know China was from a uh, uh, so-called planned economy, socialist system to a kind of you know Chinese uh, character characteristics, you know, more like the capitalism, yeah, right? Because uh, people own property now, and uh, so that's a big bring a new uh, China. But if you look at the U.S. as a capitalism, then everyone owns a piece of real estate and property, cars and stuff. But in the virtual cyber republic, uh, no one owns personal property, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? So that's the other way around. You see what I'm trying to say? Yep. Yeah. It's more like a worse than planned economy. Yeah, it's worse than a planned one. It's yeah. a cartel-controlled economy. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Controlled by very few people. Right. Yep. So if uh, we can have finally have capitalism, in the cyber republic, yeah. that says something. Basically, yeah. you're forced to use uh, Instagram because of their network effects. You know, there's no other reason why you use it because your friends are all using it. You're forced to use it. <laughs> Not only that, because so the the reason why they use it is because otherwise, at least Tencent, what Tencent give you is that uh, when you log in, all those micro websites were genuine. Yeah. Even though they take a piece of share and they let only their friends go on, and their competition like Alibaba won't be able to. Uh, go out to the Tencent, but like, so they guarantee end-to-end -end security. As Correct. I said, otherwise, this internet have no, you are not sure which I, I, I don't know if you run into uh, this ICO websites, everything is equal by the barcode, right? Everything look exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And with a different、uh, wallet address. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Then for everyday、uh, Jane and Joe, you just log in and you see the barcode. Are you gonna pay? And if you pay, you don't know where your money goes, goes right? Yeah, yeah, it just, yeah, like, just goes、uh, down a rabbit hole and never comes out again. Right.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that easily happened because、uh, people could、uh, intercept at your uh, uh, router. They、uh, hijack your router and put in because every time you're trying to access that、uh, web address, right? Some new startup SEO dot com turned out to redirect to somewhere else. To、so、somewhere completely different. Yeah. yeah. Then you see、uh, a、uh, barcode and. You spend it, you pay it, and then the the money, is,、uh, and there goes your money. Goes, at least、uh, in Tencent, in Alibaba, you don't see, you don't have that kind of problem. They provide a security for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why people start to move into、uh, more and more into those、uh, controlled. I mean, because the T Mall is just a way to say that everything is verified, it's all luxury items, and basically this is all like legit. There's no need to worry about counterfeit. All is all real, and、mm. that's why people go there because they know it'll be real. Yeah, even though it's more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So they definitely they are there have a reason, but then there's another reason, right? So it's all more segregated in the world. It's being more controlled. Yep. So we're saying we're we're setting up a free market. A free market, digital、yeah. free market, digital which is free market, which is、awesome. personal economy. So what do you think are some of the possible use cases? Like, what do you think? Like apart. Uh, uh, like so, do you think trading would be all, or do you think people will create other? Like, what are some apps that you think would come up?、Uh, I mean, there's two. I mean, basically, I see two kinds of apps. And、uh, first of all, is、uh, as I said, it's a virtual、uh, digital assets like、uh, you know, e-books, movies, and finally,、uh, people have to have、uh, very long tail kind of bookstore、yep. instead、mm-hmm. of Amazon bookstore. You just like already、uh, say.、Um, Autobiography of、uh, myself. No one cares, but only you know. Only a few co- five copies. Yeah, 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 only five copies. But then who knows? When when I pass away, you know, one hawk, right? Oh, jeez, maybe that's、yeah. worth something. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <Yeah. laughs> that kind of thing, long tail, you know. But the other one is、uh, IoT. That's、uh, when we have.、Uh, today we mentioned、uh, when you have a smart home, you know, got movies, you know, the TVs and. Lot speakers, you know, those、uh, AI kind of uh,、yeah. uh, gadgets, and、uh, they shouldn't be really from one company, one brand, because、uh, it's not good it's for competition, and also、yeah. it's not safe. And、uh, if we know it's all open source yet, because it's end to end encrypted, and、uh, we feel very fairly confident, I can watch my home surveillance video and without fearing someone else is intruding and eavesdropping on my privacy. So that kind of、uh, app actually、uh, both apps, right? The peer to peer trading ebooks is not possible right now. And、uh, looking at、uh, your home own home video without a, a operator, without a、uh, carrier, right now it's not possible. It's not possible, right? We're we are not talking about. For me, I'm not really the guy talking about、uh, finances or investment. We're really talking about if we solve those problems, right, which do not exist before. And isn't that something, right? Isn't that something, something for someone else to create startups to make profit out of it?、Mm-hmm. That's、uh, you know that's what the web for. Web is really for everyone to develop new business on top.、Mm-hmm. We're just just providing the、uh, virtual territory. Correct. So what 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 do you think is possible that、uh, that these startups might be in the future? I mean, just based on your thinking. You know, I mean, it's very hard to say for sure, but I mean, what are some of the things you hope to see or you like to see on top? As I said, you know, like、uh, first quarter of uh, of uh, this year, we definitely will have the、uh, the peer、uh, decentralized、uh, peer to peer network、uh, uploaded the source code, and、uh, I expect people to could do like video cameras, smart drives,、uh, cloud, personal cloud drives、Ooh. on their router. Yeah, I do have a question.、Uh, I was thinking about because there's some.、Uh, I've been thinking about media in general. Like people have、uh, a very hard time monetizing certain content. You know, example,、uh, all the like YouTubers or like basically any kind of news platform, maybe new news. They have very difficulty to come and try monetize it. Do you think such a thing is possible? Yeah, definitely. Because、yeah. then you have a decentralized YouTube. Yeah, correct. So I was thinking a lot about that. Like because a lot of people want good content. But they're not really willing to pay up front or subscribe to something long term. But if they can do some sort of、uh, micro payments or like something、mm-hmm. on the elastic. Because basically, you can imagine that、uh, mm, 
we, we, we actually we built a uh, smart router uh, two years ago, and uh, now it's a little too old. We have to do a new version. Because uh, you can put a smart router, meaning router with the uh, Elasticsearch router, with the uh, uh, NAS or little server box. Right now, they're, they're, they're like this big, two hard drives in, and or one hard drive in. It's uh, the cheap ones is about uh, three hundred uh, RMB. The expensive ones like this one with the, with the NAS built in is about one thousand RMB. Uh, so you put it in your home. You can have your own home video, you know, whatever video, and uh, you list it in this uh, decentralized versions of uh, YouTube. The decentralized version is more like an aggregator, right? Every all these uh, GIFs, they're really links. When you double click, actually, you you pass a message to the uh, to the home uh, micro server. The micro server would uh, use something called a Lambda service, basically one streaming upward upload, and then. This uh, de decentralized version of YouTube will do the multicast to, let's say, uh, 10,000 uh, audience there. But of course, uh, uh, the audience get the keys from the, uh, from the micro server the micro provider, server. right? The public key, private key. So the guy who did uh, uploading and, and do multicasting, 10,000 uh, downstreaming, then he will receive the service fee. fee. Correct. Uh, he won't be able to tape anything because it's all encrypted. It's all encrypted. He may yeah. cash a little bit, but then he only he 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 earns what he service. Yeah, what he should be earned. He should be earned. Yeah. But he doesn't own the data. He, you know, like upload your video to uh, YouTube, then you basically he owns. Yeah. They yeah. own the video, not you. Yeah. Once right? you upload it to YouTube, right. it's out of your hands. And as I said today, uh, basically we we anticipate not only uh, this is a, a plain. Uh, encrypted video actually it's a video turned into games oh. so you stream that and you can easily imagine you know, this video uh, it's easy to have your own encryption algorithm and scramble it with your own executable head, header and basically the program consists of uh, uh, mostly your data but then somehow there's a code building and uh, how you can monetize actually it's the authors correct to say so basically something like, like because I know, you know, basic attention token, the one by Brian and Inich, that one, it, it, it is a good idea, but I feel like they, they make, the, they, they are missing the foundation layer. Basically, they're building on Ethereum, which makes them less susceptible to like throughput of Ethereum. But if there's something like Elastos, then, you know, it changed the game because basically they're building a uh, decentralized like YouTube or browser on top of a very solid foundation, which I think is really needed now. Because when they do Ethereum, what, what they can do is actually they can do the uh, ledging. They can do the bookkeeping, they can do the ID tracking with Ethereum, that's no problem. But then when they really do the uh, the broadcasting, actually they need a much more powerful peer-to-peer uh, -peer network. Yes. Correct. Yes. Right now they're limited by the kitties, you know, the kitties then, go up, then they... The mean, of course, like, yeah. a, like a, a crypto kitty, kitty, the UIs are done, you know, by a different program. The basically yeah. program is a mobile app then. The, uh, Ethereum just for the uh, for the ledger, yeah. right. for uh, again for the ID for the ledger, right? But that said, it's actually still because it's an internet game, it's prone to middleman attacks, right? Because when you do the uh, uh, video streaming, you could uh, still uh, what if people hack your uh, your PC and they inject a virus into your phone and uh, uh, steal your uh, the key is still your, your, your intercept your video. And, and yeah, all you want to do is just stream and they take everything from you. So what I'm saying is that we propose to have virtual machines running on your uh, on your uh, Android. Instead of running an app on Android, it's running a virtual machine a virtual on Android. Machine, right? It's just like well, when you run, run an app on Windows or when you run, you run a, a Java app, uh, and the Java virtual machine is all on Windows, which is another layer in there. So the uh, encryption, the encryption, the data is in the Java virtual machine instead of uh, on the window itself, mm -hmm. right? If a uh, window has a virus, and uh, still at least you know the virtual machine is end-to-end -end encrypted, and very hard for the uh, for Windows virus to uh, going backward, uh, going upward to hack the uh, virtual machine, yeah. right? Because it'll be bad also. <laughs> I mean, basically, you see what, what what do you see as uh, on Windows? You see a RAR file with a key, right? You basically, you see a big file encrypted drive, and what's in there? And the viruses have no idea. 
and no way of knowing how many files and how to divide the uh, file systems, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very hard for like a host OS where maybe on demo cases, they look okay. But uh, we're talking about, if we're talking about a, a smart economy consists of millions of applications and uh, uh, billions of uh, customers. And, it's big money. Kind of yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. It's big more, uh, uh, more. It has to work all the time, you know? Yeah. They cannot go down. I mean, at least in theory. At yeah, least in theory. theory. Otherwise, you have no hope. Because as I said, uh, the internet, right? Middleman tag, DDoS tag, really it's not a, whether you can fix the bug. It's, they're not bugs. They're by design. Yeah, it's structural. It's yeah, structural. they're just structural. They're just by design. Correct. So people are saying, you know, you can always put more AI algorithms trying to predict when, where the, the attack will happen, right. but you can never be foolproof. You yeah. can never, yeah. you can never. You're always uh, analyzing path data, so you're always playing one step behind. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, that's how uh, clumsy or how shaky the current internet is. Mm -hmm. Everyone, actually, uh, most people know about it. They just don't want to say it. They just don't want to say yeah. it. Yeah, so I mean, scary. after I learned programming a bit, then I see certain things, I'm just like, I don't think I should be doing all this, you know, doing all this hacking and everything. I see people trying to hack this and hack that. I feel quite unsafe, actually. So when my parents, they are new to, like, internet, then when they do all these things, I'm a bit worried because they don't know, like, some of the changes they're doing. Because the people are always blame on, like, uh, uh, you, should be, uh, you should keep your password somewhere else, you should be more prudent, you know. It's really not consumer's fault. Yeah. You guys should do a better job. Yeah, yeah. That's why, you know, like those security guys, those, you know, companies always blame on, yeah, you should change your password often. No, you should create well, a... Yeah, you should uh, create a... Uh, for example, you know, you can imagine, <coughs> here you got a phone, and uh, basically... You know, you launch an app, and then just the app will ask you to log in, and you basically put your finger there and uh, there, stare at it, and that's all I have, right? And then that's my identity, and you check against my blockchain, that's me, you log in on my behalf, then from this virtual machine, you, you, that's, you're talking to, to the other. That's my window to the cyber world, mm -hmm. and I'm there now, right? My avatar is over in the other world, and... Uh, and what else do I need? No. Because nothing, no password, no nothing safe on this hardware. Yep, nothing. It's all in this virtual. No more, no more password managers. Yeah. <laughs> no no more password managers. Yeah. No. Thank God. It's future. Yeah. So long it's, as, you know, because so with this, um, you, you put your hand, you know, your, 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 your pupil in your hand, in your hand. Just like, currently, if you go through customs, I don't know if you go. You know, China has that now. U.S. has that as well. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, you just stare at the camera and you put your finger and you're into a country. You're in. Yep. You're in. Mm -hmm. well, who else? Do I need a custom officer? I mean, right now, I don't. Go through this mobile custom, APP. Mm -hmm. You know, before you get off the airplane, you just say who you are, yep. you declare anything. Then by there, you just barcode scan on the machine and put your finger and stare at the camera. Hey, you're in. You're yeah. in. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have the staring part in Singapore. I just put a fingerprint. And it, and it goes in. Like in Singapore, no, camera is somewhere. Yeah, camera somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. somewhere. Oh but I know, I know they know everyone. They have 99, more than 99%. Because they, they, anyone who's like, they, because we have military service, so anyone who comes back who's like AWOL, you know, they they go away, they go missing. When they come back, they show you catch the guy because they have cameras waiting for him. So wow. they show yeah. you recognize the person. Yeah, and they just sure. flag, the guy will just take you and then yeah, he'll just yeah, arrest you. Yeah. So right now, China, U.S., and like Taiwan, Hong Kong, they're all like that. I think Australia has that also. Yeah, the because what I'm saying is, uh, why not the uh, virtual cyber republic, right? Now, why not the virtual country? It's the same thing. It's you the same, like, exactly. Push your finger and stare at it, you're into that. I guess it's a cyber frontier, frontier, like cyber yeah. war. This is yeah. the whole world. You know? That's it's a it. New, it's a new frontier altogether. Yeah. And then, you know, because it's all end-to-end -end encrypted and... Uh, there's no uh, possibility of middleman or DDoS. See, sometimes I feel like in, in the blockchain, actually, it, the internet is becoming more like what internet was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like last time, you know, there were a lot of promises, but the internet where it is now is like, there are a lot of issues with it. And now with blockchain, there are so many more things you can do with like distributed trust and you couldn't do before. And it's, it, it really brings the internet to where it was supposed to be rather than, you know, where it was. And I'm lucky that it, I have a chance to experience it yeah. rather than Missing out because not being born. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On the ground floor of it. Yeah, because right now, when we look at the, you know, like uh, Linux, 
TCP/IP, blockchain. We're all talk about the physical infrastructure. Correct. But right now, people can easily understand, you know, like really good language machines, and that's basically the, another virtual. Yeah, it's another layer, one. right? Yeah. Instead of uh, the physical infrastructure, there it's more like a dirty sewer, the plumbing underneath the infrastructure yeah. of the city. But then we're building the rules. Uh, uh, Basically, the, the virtual uh, buildings, virtual individuals, virtual phones, and then people talk about socially through a peer-to-peer -peer social network of virtual. So another different, it's another layer. Different layer. Do you think in the future people would a lot of people would know about blockchain, or would they just? It would, would it be another TCP? Actually, yeah. they don't have to understand. They don't have to. Yeah, that's why. That's why I believe. Just also. they don't have to. I mean, TCP IP will be there for a long time, long time. right? Yeah. Maybe there's an IPv6 coming. Maybe there's some ATM frame relay kind of network coming in. But then, TCP IP will be there for the foreseeable 10, 20 years for sure. But then the thing is, it's like a copperware is still here somewhere. Right, but then there's a it shouldn't affect the the fiber optics shouldn't affect the the satellite communication, right? Because of the backward compatibility forced us. Because I remember it, uh, around the year ninety, right? Uh, the guy Clean Rock, uh, what's his first name? The guy basically who invented the, the first. No, I mean, he said eighties. I just I don't know when. <laughs> I'm only born in ninety six. <laughs> I bought it in Basically, so I the know. guy wrote the hello from UCLA to whether it's Stanford or Berkeley. I mean, basically, the first two nodes of the internet, the guy wrote uh, something. Was it the DAPA people? Was it yeah, DAPA, I mean, basically from UCLA to uh, probably Stanford. I probably don't know, man. Yeah, basically, the very, very first message, right, from UCLA to Stanford. That was very, very, very first uh, message. So, you know, it's in history somewhere. I mean, even the, he didn't even finish the whole hello or something. He just finished a few letters. Then definitely, you know, if you see the first three letters, that means that's what he sent because otherwise it's three letters shouldn't make any sense, right? Yeah. That's exactly what he sends and uh, the other party received only partial message. That's the, actually the first internet uh, message ever. What I'm saying is that um, by that time, <laughs> you know, they decided on the decentralization, decentralized uh, everything. So currently we're really, really, um, then in the, around 1991, he gave a talk, the same person, he gave a talk at the University of Illinois, he, uh, all the talk was talk about uh, TCP IP, which is so lousy, internet was so bad, and himself, right? Yeah, himself. The inventor himself. The inventor. And so, you know, ATM networks is the future, you know, we should do the free relay, because uh, the, the packet switching is out. Blah, 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 hold on, the same person. Mm -hmm. And uh, guess what, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later, yeah. it's still yeah. his old past, yeah. he hates. Yeah. yeah. Right? Still here, man. <laughs> That's because of the backward compatibility. Oh, yeah. You know, even though there's new technology, but then he couldn't, uh, otherwise all the infrastructure software have to be rewritten. Yeah. People are so lazy, they don't want to rewrite they don't it. Want to do and it. Uh, even though it's not a, the best uh, choice, but people are kind of stuck with it. What I'm saying is if separating the uh, the computation, separating the virtual machine from the communication, the copyware still be there, but then we can start to lay fiber optics now. Mm -hmm. That's the way to the future. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. Otherwise, always backward compatible, then you always stay stuck with the copyware. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's the uh, sad or uh, sorry story. The sorry story, the sad reality. Yeah. 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 Laziness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. It's not the. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, the copper wire has this great uh, greatness in history, but not anymore. But not anymore. Yeah, right, right now it's like fiber optics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or something. Or maybe down the road it's not even fiber, right? It's something else. Quantum satellites. It should be, a, you know, independent, separate. So this separation of the infrastructure from the computation, from the virtual uh, social network, that's very, very critical to the innovation of the future. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Understand. I mean, these things on a white paper just really don't make so much sense. Other than when you talk to someone who actually like work work on it so long, but like, when I read a white paper, like I don't really get some of the things because it's like so abstract. But mm -hmm. when after you explain, then I start to understand what what Elon Musk is really about. Yeah, and that's why these videos are going to be so. Yeah, it, it so really good. helps a lot, man. Yeah. It really helps. I don't a lot. Know.
我我们这个 video take 完了，能不能让他们去编辑一下呢？<笑>你識嘅會攞誒，係呢個 team actually 係係限於誒 ，we could actually take over the network packets and make the internet better. We have the world. We have the world, and also we need some help. So、uh, the, the, at that time. I、uh, was one of those、uh, hardcore developers that proposed using C++. But Microsoft wanted to do it in C sharp. C sharp and Python competing with Java because they think、uh, every two years the CPU doubles the speed, and if patients could use Java and C sharp, and the、uh, uh, system developer could use C, so the two worlds actually are segregated by languages. Yep. Like、uh, if you are in C, you are a、uh, You know, hardware、yeah. system, right? If you are in C sharp, you are just application. You know, the guys who drive the CD and uh, uh, the consumers. But the at、uh, that time we didn't quite believe that because of、uh, there's always people want to squeeze out every CPU cycle and instead of drive on the CD, so drive small cars. Yep. So. <coughs> Actually,、uh, Microsoft didn't agree, and,、uh, so canceled the announcement. And, uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons I left、uh, Microsoft and came back to China. Really? Which is、uh, yeah, the other team is.、Uh, Wasn't that in like twenty? No, that's on、uh, no ninety、uh, nine. Summer of ninety nine. Summer of ninety nine. And、uh, February of ninety nine, we went skiing、uh, to Whistler. So we named the Whistler and Longhorn and Blackcomb and three offices. That's turned out to be XP, Vista, and、uh, Windows 10、uh, in a way. Because at that time we planned for eight years, but turned into six,、uh, 15. So、uh, I mean, at least the basic principles were laid at that time. No network, no DLAN. Right, those principles are laid at that time. Really, we're talking about literally twenty, twenty years ago. Yeah, so、right. basically, you're saying this is a really stupid world.、Mm-hmm. You know, the things we could know twenty years ago, a few geek engineers we knew, and、uh, for the humankind, twenty years, and still think it's too advanced, too abstract, and because.、Uh, How many problems we have with the network? The problem, that's the thing. As I'm always, you know, sometimes I I, I brag or, or complain with my wife, saying, "Oh, this is at least it's hardship." You know, for me, I left U.S. You know, that kind of shit. I could have grown because I I found my own company, startups, worked my butt off, you know, and at that time, my family was still in Seattle. And, A lot of hardship to the family, you know, to me as a startup to solicit for money and you know, educate folks. Twenty years, twenty years, it goes nowhere. I mean, and I shouldn't complain, but quite a few people support me, but not enough to to have this a、uh, big uh, project finished.、Mm-hmm. And, and、uh, with this blockchain, all of such, and not only we're talking about.、Uh, Technology we just、uh, share, but also、uh, since we're building a, a cyber republic,、uh, a new frontier, basically we're building a new country. And the whole new virtual, virtual, virtual. This more like a country against the world. It's、uh, just everyone can tap into it. So the country is limited by where you are. Yeah, but、country. anyone in the world. Can... Oh, we welcome everyone to immigrate. Exactly, <laughs> I'm immigrating. No, no immigration, no customs, right? To <laughs>、yeah. stop you. You're afraid to apply your own passport. Yeah. No one saying no to you. No one will say no. As long as you want to be a lower bank citizen, you're going to pay because you know everything is clear. Transactions lost. You know the, you want to evade tax.、Yeah. Think again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's a borderless virtual frontier. Is what it is. You're welcome to come yeah, here, you're but、welcome. you're not going to evade tax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're evading tax. You stay in the old system. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> so cool, man. Yeah, no, it's amazing. But then the thing is, you know, because so if you read the、uh, white paper, we're going to、uh, 
issue, like uh, not only we right now the, uh, the money, the proceeds we get, we're going to pay back for the development of this new territory. Then uh, after we spend, uh, you know, set up the uh, uh, basically this is jumpstart. We jumpstart the uh, the social uh, media. We jumpstart the uh, development developers community. Hopefully, you know, you can help us. Yes. And we're also uh, as I said, I will start to uh, uh, checking code to GitHub and uh, having uh, like uh, Martin and uh, other people to really look into the code and help with the development work and put in bounty programs, reward the. Uh, uh, reward the community. Reward the community. In the past, you know, I have to literally solicit it because it's an open source project and people would ask you, how do you make money? How do you make money? Right. Now it's just zombie. You know, if you if support, you think it's going to go up. You just and now we're saying, you know, hey, we print our own money. Yeah, <laughs> your own bank. You believe it? You know, we can do dedicate like 1% of the GDP to the the who doing the maintenance, yeah, right? Correct. Who is doing the infrastructure? Does the have inflation? Like because of my yeah, we're going to have four percent of the uh, uh, inflation. Thirty uh, seventy percent of that goes to miners, and thirty percent of going to exactly the, what we say community, meaning the developers or marketers. But then the guys who is maintaining this infrastructure, right? We're trying to set up a, a democratic uh, uh, organization. You know, Uber and uh, Airbnb, they, they, they have this new organization model called the holacracy. So meaning, basically, it's democracy without precedent. You know, because uh, uh, whoever uh, solicits the money, right, you have to, have to be the CEO because you have to report to the VC. You know, whoever gives you money, you're responsible for it, right? And saying, you know, for the two million you, you get from VC, you know, five minutes to deliver, and you're going to kick employees to deliver, and blah, blah. So that guy, the big brother, has to be the CEO. But now, if we dedicate 1.2% uh, of the GDP, you know, currently with the valuation, it'll be two million dollars to start, I mean, which is not a lot, but since we have the proceed from Bitcoin and stuff, so it should be able to carry us for two years. It'll yeah. Be and then after this two years, then you know this one percent. Hopefully, will be you know two million, two maybe million, ten million, ten million. Yeah. Yep. But then at least uh, that's the uh, that who decide how do we spend. So that's where we need uh, kind of a senate, upper house, lower house. You know. Yep. The partners. That's why this. Uh, uh, we haven't really. Uh, I think it's uh, it really, but it's like uh, you know, Bitmain, Neo, Yasm, maybe those are the upper house. The upper house. Yeah, the house you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And who is doing the uh, Google? Maybe another seat, a G four. Who is doing the uh, uh, AI kind of thing? You know, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Alibaba kind of you know shops and Shop maybe the G five, G six, G seven. So those are like T20 would be the upper house kind, and then the lower house would be the head of developers, head of the community, <laughs> the uh, you know valuation by you know like uh, okay how many fans do you have? You are entitled to have a seat mm -hmm. or representative, like <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, you you have a population of this much, man. <laughs> you have two representatives. <laughs> yep, exactly. And you have this much population. You have four representatives. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and developers, you have that many lines of code behind you, you know. Yeah. You if have. you have a, if your your business have made, uh, you know, you don't have to pay us, but then at least your business is that valuation. Mm -hmm. Then you have a seat. <laughs> to well, you, the, uh, you want to know it's something funny? I was reading um, an article from Microsoft, and they said that applications are going to be the new currency of the world. Yeah. That. Money is going to be on. Applications are going to be the new currency. I, I, I wouldn't go that far, but at least so we can turn everything into applications. Yes. Right? Everything yeah. with the circulation would be uh, applications. Of course, so we can do, get paid by uh, cryptocurrency. Exactly. And um, so that's that. And then, then who is writing the constitution? Who will be the representatives? We're still wide open. Yes, yeah. for this wet wild, right? Wet wild, wild west. I'll take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have to prove yourself worthy. You know, you have to tell. I'm here early, I take a seat. <laughs> you know what I mean? How many uh, followers do you have? How many developers do you have? Yeah. You know, how many business, how much business you made in this community? So rules are paid by by the uh, constitution or by the representatives, right? Because mm -hmm. we have only 
one point two percent. Yeah. I mean, ten million. Say how I've been to. It's like a budget, a national budget. Right? I'm going to use yeah. it for search. I'm going to use it for browser. <laughs> That's something more number. like a Star Wars at the beginning, <laughs> right? Here's the Confederate, <laughs> and, uh, and cheers to the, cheers to that. Should we go? You know. S- <laughs> Rescue uh, Luke uh, Luke Wind from where the continent, I mean, where the planet, we don't even know where it is. Yeah, it, no. Basically, that's something we're really, really open. Yes. And uh, we hope, you know, uh, the community will help us put the message <laughs> and how we're going to set up the rules for this new frontier. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. No one is going to control, yet we have somehow yes. a. Uh, because how can they spend this? Exactly. How are the funds going to be spent? And right. How are they going to be used? Are they going to be used exactly for the development? Are they going to be used for right. marketing? Are they going to be used for, you know, management of management of, right. of, of people? And, and so that's why we are here only um, for the time being, kind of uh, interim, or. I put it nicely, more like a governor of Australia. Mm-hmm. You know, after the Congress decide, I'll sign yes. I won't be able to sign no. Yes is the only word I can sign. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like what the home face is. It's like when the network's in its infancy, uh-huh. it's easier to centralize all the decision. But when, once it's grown up in the infancy, then you will start to decentralize the governor. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what a lot of people take over. You know, right, right. That's what I'm talking about, Correct. right? Exactly the same idea. Because uh, we are... Uh, because of in the past, the Americans or the uh, Europeans, you know, actually the overseas, they have done more with the open source. And also they have, uh, uh, because of uh, the democracy thing, right, in, the, uh, in their system for so long, how do you organize? Actually, those are the areas we definitely need uh, help. Mm-hmm. And uh, because volunteers like me, you guys are flying that far and uh, motivated. So those are the, definitely the people we need. Yes. And uh, we're still very, very early. So uh, that's another way for, as I said, as you can see, most of the developers so far, uh, Chinese developers, yes. in the past, the Chinese community have received more source code from everywhere else in the world, like operating systems, programming languages. Now it's time to give? give yeah, back. yeah, uh, definitely. Give definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. It's time to give back. Uh, something, uh, source code, uh, or even the control of the foundation. Uh, we should uh, open that up. And, uh, well, I am in contact with a large group of developers in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are trying to build on Neo right now. We could, uh, as I said, on January 8th, I'll be there, so we could organize uh, like we should have and, organize uh, like a couple hours. Yeah. And, uh, uh, together, you know, pa- ca- pa- pass the message along. Exactly, yeah. This is, a, I, I do feel, because it's a, if it's a smart web, it's a huge undertaking. It's right. It's mm-hmm. by no means anything small. Mm-hmm. And uh, by, because the, uh, we have a few like uh, diehard fans here, but then, uh, as I said, the expertise, the uh, the overall general uh, atmosphere here is more uh, because of uh, only opened up for 30 years. Still not long enough not long to build enough. up the culture. And, uh, people always ask you, where's the money the first? Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Instead of uh, where, I mean, basically, when I talk to them, they say, does change the world mean anything? Does that mean anything to you? Yeah. They don't. Mm-hmm. Not much. Yeah. Right? And uh, that's a little sad uh, fact. So, well, that's very admirable because um, one thing I love about the blockchain is it gives power back to the people who yeah. change the world. Yeah, to how yeah. it's supposed to be. We don't want to be like uh, you know, I, I know there are some people in dark nights and stuff, right? If they want to stay with dark nights, stay with dark night. We want to really build a bright night, a bright. Network, yep, and uh, which not controlled yet. Everything is transparent, but everything's transparent. Finally, it's possible. You know, after recent years of Bitcoin, everything is is becoming more possible. In the past, it was very difficult. Like you could trust institutions, you could trust banks, you could trust governments. Yeah. yeah, So that's kind of a, what we're saying in the second half of the talk is more like 
it's another social experiment. Because、yeah. I've been to.、Uh, For my generation, not only as I said, I know I've been through、uh, like core memory and、uh, those uh, uh, hand toggled、uh, bios, <laughs> <thing> . but I also、uh, been through because、um, uh, when I was a kid, we've been through the big famine in China, been through Cultural Revolution, been to the farms on a、uh, work as a labor, and also when I went to the United States or、so、visited a place, I went to University of Illinois and. There's a township called New Harmony. New Harmony was an interesting place. I visited there twice. Was、um, I mean basically、uh, that's a little township、uh, close to the border of、uh, Indiana and Illinois in the southern Illinois, southern Indiana.、Uh, in, I think it's inside Indiana. I could be wrong, but then somewhere there. So the township was interesting. You know, in the eighty eighteen. Around eighteen fifty-ish, this、uh, missionary, you know, those guys were saying that socialist system, people live and、uh, work together and the commonwealth kind of thing.、Mm-hmm. So he recruited the、uh, you know, beggars,、uh, homeless, saying, "Hey, come on, we work together, we get something, create a, a commune." <laughs>、mm-hmm. Of course, I mean the ideology is good, but the the people he recruited was was wrong. Maybe、oh. <laughs> you recruited so. <laughs> I、don't want to work to start with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to work out, <laughs> <laughs> right? Just because the the the, the priest was nice,、yeah. uh, doesn't mean you, the system could work out,、yeah. right? So、uh, after a few years, it, it failed, right? Because it wouldn't get, get meet the end. But at least they have a township. You know, the people vote, and、uh, you know they have、uh, this commune. They have the they kind of earlier. Socialist system, right? In the eighteen something, it's called. That's why it's a town called New Harmony. New Harmony. Yeah, and so it failed. Everything's everybody's gone. Twenty something years later, the guy tried again. He tried again. <laughs> 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 This time he learned better and get some more diligent, you know, hardworking folks there and try to get. And <laughs> failed. They failed in and all. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's.、Uh, I'm, I'm not teasing. I'm not really laughing. The guy. I'm just really pay respect. Yeah. And I went to、uh, museum of、uh, uh, Ford,、mm-hmm. Henry Ford, yeah, right? Ford. And、uh, if you see Addison, you'd see Henry Ford. Not only they are entrepreneurs, they are inventors. They're also trying out. You know, winter time when the farmers or.、Uh, Had spare time? Could they assemble cars they in the winter? Cars in the- <laughs> Farm in the in the summer. Yeah, I mean, come on. yeah and he tried, yeah. right? Yeah, and he failed. He、no. failed. Of course, they <laughs> need dedicated workers for、yeah. assembly lines. Yeah, if you need an assembly line. But at least one thing is, it, those guys, right? They have the gu- courage, the guts to do it.、Yeah. To Why I'm not saying failure is bad. No, failure is never bad. It's no, it's never. The、bad. guy, you know, so rich, he had the social responsibility. He wanted the farmers to share the wealth, but at least it shouldn't share by receiving money. You should be sharing by work. Yeah. In your spare time in the winter, you can make as much as summer.、Mm-hmm. But of course, what can they do in the summer? In the summer,、mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a kind of laughing matter right now. But what I'm saying is, I really admire those missionaries, those、yeah. and the Henry Ford, right? I admire.、So、what I'm saying is, I admire anyone who takes a risk、um, and goes this after. This is a new、uh, because we're building a new territory. Maybe there's a possibility of a new way of. Governing of governance, yep. Maybe may failing, right? Just like Henry Ford, just like that stupid mission, <laughs> please. <laughs> But、uh, you know, he's never stupid. Exactly, exactly. I believe that a hundred percent. Risk takers that believe in something are probably the people. I Because he has、most. to have spend his own money、yeah. or whatever is who donated it into church. Because you got the homeless, so who can move them? Yeah, <laughs> you have to pay for them. Where <laughs> <laughs> they live, everything,、mm-hmm. all in. Yeah, 
So that, in those sense, you know, I really uh, admire Americans. Yeah, they tried. Yes. They tried. Cheers to that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> they tried. Thank you. They tried. Even though some of them, a lot of them failed. A lot of them have failed. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's more like inspiration. Why we we stayed here for so long? Mm -hmm. We tried. Yep. We might as well fail. Might as well fail a few times in your lifetime. Yeah. Because we're actually last year, June of last year. Oh, okay. Okay, do I have some question? Yes, sure. yes, I do. Uh, so, first question I have is regarding the Bitcoin airdrop that's going to happen with Elastos. Um, uh, could you explain the airdrop for Bitcoin holders? Oh, um, <clears throat> our uh, strategy is we just airdrop the uh, uh, Ella, uh, just uh, authorized by the Huobi dot uh, prop. Uh, one Bitcoin, one Ella, because we hope to uh, have uh, some of the Bitcoin community uh, to join us, to join Elastos community. But we we don't uh, airdrop another uh, exchange because um, we hope to make a community about the technology uh, innovation community. Uh, so we, I will uh, we will airdrop the ELA to other uh, te technology tech community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just Bitcoin. Not just Bitcoin. Sure. You're trying to get yeah, the that, whole tech community. Yeah, involved. that's our rule. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, next question I have is regarding the development with Elastos. Mm -hmm. um, when do you think the whole Elastos OS is going to be ready and fully um, functional? Uh, avoid functional. Uh, sorry, what is functional? Works. It works. It, uh, it's it, functional. When? Yeah, when? Uh, well, maybe half year, I guess. Half year. Because uh, maybe in the next uh, June or July, we have the um, um, SDK, or we, we can uh, connect with some APP, uh, conventional APP. So we, we have a uh, last uh, strong time, so we can run the uh, some application on the Elastos. So I guess uh, at that time, uh, many APPs can uh, connect it with blockchain, uh, have the credit resource uh, by the Elastos. That time, I think Elastos is useful for the, uh, for the application of blockchain in the future. Yes. Yeah. I agree, hundred percent. Sure. I agree, hundred okay. percent. Well, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, Elastos is trying to create a decentralized operating system. Yeah. Yeah. So, will Elastos be able to work with already operating systems out there like Windows and Linux? Uh, you mean compare with them? Yeah, compare. Oh, with them. Elastos is the first one to based on the inter internet operating system. Not as the Windows. Windows just uh, based on the PC. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even the Apple. Sure. So, uh, so Elastos in Chinese means some cloud. Yun. Yeah. <laughs> so it is based on the uh, internet. Uh, their uh, Elastos idea is um, the computation is not uh, online or online is not computation. Is it's a forbid the uh, app to connect the internet straight straight away. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. So so will you be able to run applications on Windows on the Elastos OS? Uh, on Android also. Yes. yes. Uh, we Elastos just can run the uh, Elastos at runtime, so they can run any OS. Yeah, uh, run the OS, just a virtual machine. So they can, uh, based on any uh, operating system, just on internet. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, could you explain the consensus model behind Elastos? Uh, consensus model, for example, the uh, electric book uh, in in. Amazon now you you buy a 
electric book from the uh, from the Amazon, but just uh, buy a copy of this book. Yes, not the right of the book, but on Elastos, the uh, books uh, the number is as uh, uh, Bitcoin is limited, uh, maybe twenty uh, first uh, meaning. Yeah, as it's just limited. It's a, a fixed number. So if you sold out one electric book on Lassos on blockchain, you must uh, minus one. So the, the total amount is, uh, is fixed. It's a fixed number. Yeah, it's fixed number. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sure. So you guys are um, actually have your whitelist open for Elastos right now. Um, yeah, it's open resource. It's open right now. Um, how's um, the sign up going? Um, there are a lot of people signing up for the um, the crowd sale. Uh, sorry, um, are people signing up to participate in the um, crowd sale? Uh, maybe uh, we believe our team our team to make uh, the more advanced about the, uh, the technology of the Elastos. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, talk about the community, the Elastos community. I'm, I'm sure there is um, a lot of people here yeah. that are very interested. Um, yeah. America is getting yeah. very, very interested in yeah, Elastos. Yeah, yeah. Thank well, you. Thank what you. is your guys' plan to um, grow the community within the United States? Good question. Uh, in China, you know, uh, in the last um, June and July, we, we have uh, uh, some private equity uh, in, in China, not ICO. Yeah, we just uh, maybe our friends, the private, private uh, crowdfunding, mm -hmm. and we got some uh, 4,000 bitcoins. So in China, we have a community about the investors. Uh, but in America in uh, Silicon uh, Silicon Valley, we hope to build up our community uh, more technology, uh, more geek. Uh, so we we always have a meet meet up with the geek uh, as you saw in the last <laughs> yeah December. So we we uh, we hope to airdrop some uh, for the for the technology community, but. By some, but uh, we have not decide make the decision about uh, which which platform we airdrop such. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you can give me some idea. I can give you some ideas. <laughs> yeah, definitely. suggestion. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. I definitely have a feeling. Um, sure. Bitrex, as you know, is probably one of the largest um, American exchanges. Yeah. So um, okay. definitely looking at Bitcoin holders on Bitrex would be a great way to airdrop within the United States. Oh, yeah. As uh, folks. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. Sure. So could you talk to me a little bit about um, the connection with NEO? Um, you guys ah. have just um, had the sure. G3. So okay. could you expand on that a little bit? Uh, NEO, uh, at first, NEO's founder, uh, Hong Fei Da. Yeah. Is my old friend. Yeah. We, I know him uh, maybe four years ago. So uh, I am their uh, angel investor. Yeah. Um, but now uh, we think the, the new have a very nice, uh, <clears throat> very nice uh, smart contract, but use the uh, CLR uh, means. Uh, Common language runtime, yeah. Uh, CLR is from Microsoft, so you can easily use uh, than the easier used by the uh, by the pro programmer than the um, Ethereum. So I, I think they have uh, more uh, more light future. So we hope Elastos can cooperate with the new to build up a uh, uh, better smart contract uh, and smart economy mm -hmm. environment. Yes. Yeah. So Elastos has been a project that's been in the works for 18 years? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. Um, when was blockchain decided to be used with the last dose? With the, just recently, within the last couple uh, of years? Just last year, maybe last year, last uh, June. Uh, uh, because um, we, Chen Rong is the founder of the Elatos, maybe. Uh, what do you see it actually as? I think a smart economy can let everyone to do business decentralized. They, they can, they can um, have their business uh, autonomous uh, their self. For example, pay and exchange and uh, um, to communicate. Yeah. yeah, communicate effectively, smartly. Yeah, I mean, sure. Because autonomous. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And autonomous yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, making efficient. Sorry. Let's take out the middleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, no. The third party. No third yeah. parties. Exactly. Yeah, that's our uh, our dream. Exactly. You're, yeah. you the last dose is create an operating system yeah. for the peer-to-peer -peer economy. Yeah. Me to you. There's no yeah. more lawyer in between. There's no sure. more real estate agent. Yeah. It's, it's that's, that's if, I want, if I want to sell a house yeah. to you, I can yeah. sell it directly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Yeah. So um, my last question for yeah. you is regarding um, any future partnerships. I know the G3, that was Bitmain, uh, NEO, and Elastos. Yeah, sure. So, uh, in China. <laughs> yes, how about an expansion on that? Is there any other companies you're looking at to add to the uh, partnership? We hope so, but uh, maybe there's some some condition is not uh, uh, suitable uh, now, not this time. Maybe we will really, we, we will always talk about this and uh, but we, we can always cooperate with each other. With, with each other. For Bitman is the la largest uh, Retashi producer in the whole of, of Bitcoin. So... Mm -hmm.